morning, good afternoon, depending on whenever you're watching this. We just want to say hello. We're so glad to be back again teaching Sunday School. Today we're going to focus our attention on the topic, Born with a Promise, Call Before Birth. But as always, we say a prayer before we get started. So let's get going. Lord, we want to thank you right now, Lord, for this day, for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you, Father, that we realize, God, that we were born with a promise. Lord, and you are a promise keeper. We thank you, God, that you saw fit to send your son Jesus down to fulfill the promise of salvation to your people. Lord, we pray, God, right now, God, that we remember the promise that you have made and Lord, that you will never fail us. Lord, you never failed us yet. So Lord, we just count it done right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray God as we enter into this lesson, Lord, that we will receive everything you have for us. Lord, may the teens watching, um, adults watching, whoever is watching, Lord, receive the message, Lord, and may you push me out of the way, Lord, and you take over. Lord, we pray God for this ministry, Bethel Baptist Church. We pray for our pastor, our first lady, the first family, for every minister member and friend. Lord, we pray, God, that you would bless us indeed and help us, Father, to draw close to you. Lord, help us to remember your promises, Lord. Help us to trust in you, Lord. And we just right now want to give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray and do believe. Amen. Amen. So today is December 13th, and again, we'll be focusing on born with a promise called before birth. Let us first start with our lesson aim, which is to realize the significance of genealogy. That's our lineage, our genes, the line through which we um, were born. And in this particular case, we're focusing on the genealogy of Jesus. <laughs> so the line through which Jesus came, um, we want to appreciate the miraculous birth of Jesus and purpose to trust God. We want you to purpose in your heart, purpose in your minds to trust God to intervene in difficult situations in our lives, in your lives. That's our goal for today with today's lesson. So we're going to start off now by um, going into the lesson itself. We'll start with the story, the lesson story, as Sister Rose likes to call it. Uh, again, born with the promise, the big idea called before birth. Chantel was so upset. She hadn't eaten all day. Her mother knew something was wrong when her daughter had refused to eat her favorite dinner, meatloaf and mashed potatoes. What's wrong, baby, she asked. Nothing, Chantel replied, but her mother knew it wasn't true. Well, Mrs. Hendricks said that untouched plate of meatloaf and mashed potato downstairs says to me, excuse me, well, Mrs. Hendricks said, that untouched plate of meatloaf and mashed potatoes downstairs says to me, something is wrong. I can never go back to school again, Chantel burst out crying. I want to try out for cheerleading, but Toya's been going around telling everybody that I'm pregnant. Some of the kids believe her just because I gained a few pounds lately. What if the teachers believe her? Mama! Maybe they won't let me try out. Baby, Mrs. Hendricks said, don't let someone scare you off from your dream. I'll bet those teachers didn't pay that mess any attention. You see, tomorrow, you'll see tomorrow, and I'll be there if you need me. But Mama, her mother, interrupted her. No buts. Is there any reason why someone would think this is true? No. I made a promise to wait until I get married, Chantel said. I want my child born with a promise that I fought. I fought to obey God. Well then, hold your head up high, her mom said. Trust your character to speak for itself. 
Now, come on, come and eat. She kissed her daughter and they went to the kitchen. The next day, Chantel walked past the principal's office and saw Toya sitting angrily there. She was in trouble for spreading rumors. God had protected Chantel. That's a great story. So quick summary, as we always do. Chantel, a good student. Um, she's in the kitchen with her mom and she's upset. Her mom asks her what's going on and Chantel really doesn't give her any verbal inclination that something's wrong. But her mom knows simply because Chantel doesn't eat her dinner. And it's her favorite, meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Not my favorite, but you know, pretty good. Anyway, Chantel eventually gives in when her mom asks again, because her mom doesn't give up. And Chantel bursts out and tells her what's going on. Toya, a girl at school, has been spreading rumors on her. And Toya's concerned, a number of the students believe, as well as she has this concern that the teachers might believe and she might not be able to try out for cheerleading. And her mom is like, look, you know your character. You know who you are. You know what's inside of you. Unless there's some truth to this, no reason for you to allow this to stop you from pursuing your dreams. Hold your head up. Trust your character to speak for itself. And in the end, what happens to our friend Toya? She is in the office as Chantel walks by. She's in the office, they're in trouble for spreading rumors. So that's a quick summary of the lesson and or the lesson story as um, we like to call it in our classroom. And I just wanna call out a few points as we go through the check it questions. So the first question is, why do you think Toya started the rumors? Why do you think she started the rumors? Just think about what happens day in and day out at school, at least when we were in the normal situation of you being at school day in and day out, I'm certain things happen. Why did people start rumors? For excitement, due to jealousy or envy of some sort, you know, just put your thinking cap on about the things that happened when you were in school. I'm sure this is a similar situation. Would you have responded like Chantel? Would you? Would you have allowed the rumors you know not to be true to cause you to be anxious, concerned, and worried, and would that stop you from pursuing your dreams, whether it's to participate in a club, whether it's cheerleading or any other thing that you wanted to do, would you allow that to stop you? And then lastly, what was her mother's advice? And we know her mother's advice was, don't let anyone stop you from pursuing your dreams. And I just wanted to add some points to this. We have to know the reasons why things happen. We have to think deeper than just what is on the surface. Remember, as children of God, we know Satan is up to his tricks. You know, he's out there looking for ways that he can throw us off our game. He wants to trick us. He uses distractions similar to what Chantel experienced with Toya so that we forget the truth. He, these are his tactics. This is his plan to stop the plan of salvation, to stop us from believing. He plays on our emotions. And, um, and this is what happens in the world. Like they play on our emotions. He wants us to focus our attention on the world. What the students think, what other people think, what the teachers think, so on and so forth. Chantel said she wanted to try out for cheerleading, but Toya's been going around telling everyone that she's pregnant. And some of the kids believe her, then what if the teachers believe? See, Chantel's mom recognized something was afoot. 
She knew something was going on. Um, and she was there to remind her daughter to focus on her dreams, to, to get on track, to get back on track and focus on the truth. She told her to trust her character. Likewise, and even more so, God's abiding presence allows us to endure life's challenges. We can make it through whatever it is. Sometimes it, it may look small to me, but it's a big thing to you. But when we focus our attention on the truth, which is what God tells us, what the word tells us about who we are and his plans for us and how he'll never leave us nor forsake us, that he has our backs. Yeah, when we focus our attention there, we're, we're okay. We're able to come to a level of peace, our anxiety, will become, but it's only when we get distracted that Satan is able to take over and cause our minds to go all kinds of places where we start thinking about things that really don't matter at all. And so we want to focus on the truth. And when we focus on the truth and the presence of God and the fact that he has us, the Bible tells us that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. It'll set us free from all of that other stuff. Um, and so Chantel's mom, in a way, uh, was an example of or an assimilation of, I'm not using the right terminology, but an analogy is the right word. Um, the, the way she handled that, her presence, her reminding, um, it was analogous to God's, his presence, the Holy Spirit reminding us of the truth and then setting Chantel free, setting us free. So that's what we have to remember as Christians. That's what I want you to remember when something comes up and I guarantee you it will. Chantel experienced the stigma of having a baby, baby out of wedlock, though she was not actually pregnant. And this, this illustration in this story helps us to begin to understand what we're going to be talking about in more depth today, Mary's situation. So why don't we go into the scripture, which is taken from Matthew, the first chapter, verses 18 through 25. And this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus and he gave him the name Jesus. So just for a little bit of background, the passages today must be understood in the historical context in which they were written. While we may read this text with joy and wonderment, the account is fraught with impending danger on every front. And yet in the midst of the unknowns, Mary rejoiced and Joseph obeyed. Now we all know the account of the birth of Jesus. So I imagine as I went through this, you said to yourself, 
I am already familiar with the birth of Jesus. I know what happened. But it's helpful for us to step back and see what it is God is trying to tell us right now. Remember our topic, born with a promise, called before birth. Because I say this, why we should step back and think about what the scripture is telling us right now is because God's word is living. It's the living word. It was appropriate for our ancestors, it was appropriate for the people during the time of Jesus and before, excuse me, during the time of Jesus and before it was appropriate, it is appropriate even for the future. So it's appropriate for you. It doesn't matter what age, it doesn't matter what color, it doesn't matter um, what race, it does not matter. Rich, poor, it is appropriate for each of us. It is living word, a meant to meant to address us to, um, for our, in our particular situations. So we want to make sure that we focus our attention on what the word is trying to tell us, what the Lord is trying to tell us right now with this living word. So um, we hear, we learned now that Joseph obeyed Mary rejoiced. So Joseph was described as righteous and just. He was a just man who was faithful to the law. And I know when I was younger and we read this and we're talking about Mary and Joseph being committed to one another. As a matter of fact, I believe the King James Version says that they were espoused to be married. You might think to yourself, well, if they were, uh, and I think in this, in our current scripture, it said basically that they were committed to be married. Um, they were pledged to be married. That's what it says. But you say to yourself, well, they were committed to be married. Even if Mary was pregnant, Joseph didn't have, he, he, you know, he wasn't bound to her. They hadn't formally be, been married. However, I did a little bit of reading because I thought that this would be a question that might come back to your mind. So in Matthew, when it says Mary was espoused, or in this case pledged to Joseph, this is not the same thing as being engaged, which is what we might think of today, though it was similar. In Jesus's day, in Jesus's day, Jewish marriage consisted of three stages. First was the engagement which was usually arranged, and we really don't know a whole lot about that because that's not the way we get married today in, in um, our culture. But sometimes it's when the boy and the girl were still children that the parents arranged for them to be married through some sort of broker. And then when they were old enough to marry, there was a formal commitment to which the man and woman agreed um, was made. It required the confirmation of two witnesses. So um, that's the first part. And there was like this betrothal agreement, the requirement of the witnesses and um, a betrothal period indicated the intention and the deliberation for Mary, married, but it wasn't a necessity. And once the couple was betrothed or espoused, they were referred to as husband and wife. Note, Joseph is her husband, is referenced as her husband, and Mary is referenced as thy wife, as as his wife. So after that agreement, the couple was considered married, though they did not begin living together. So remember, it says they were pledged and they would not begin to live together until after the wedding ceremony, which was the third stage. This came about maybe a year or so later. Um, and dissolving the agreement, that betrothal required divorce, not annulment. And sexual unfaithfulness during the betrothal period or during that pledge period was considered adultery, not promiscuity, for which the penalty was death by stoning. So if you think about when it says in here that uh, Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. That right there is an indication that he had, he understood not only the law, not only the law, 
but he also understood um, he had compassion. So he, he recognized more than just um, the law itself, which during that time, if you remember the Pharisees, they were all about the law. And, and they were okay with stoning somebody or killing somebody just about the law. They, the heart of it all, the love of Jesus, the love of, of God was not there, which if you remember in, in the Bible and, and what we teach, what Jesus teaches is that love is what really matters. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love the neighbor, your neighbor as yourself. If you have everything else and you have not love, then everything else is worth nothing. So this is really, really important that Joseph was a man who was committed um, to to the Lord, to the God. He was not to the Lord, but to the <laughs> To God, he was committed to God as well as the law. And so he had compassion in his heart, and that's what caused him to think he would put Mary away um, privately. So let's go into the scripture, the discussion. Joseph was described as righteous and just, and he was faithful to the law. Upon hearing about Mary's pregnancy, he had this option to walk out. He was no longer obligated to marry her, but... An angel confirmed the reality of her supernatural pregnancy. Mary was protected by Joseph from the public ridicule in an ironic contrast to the fate that was to befall Jesus. In today's story, Chantel fears the stigma of an unplanned birth. The societal pressure, remember, thinking about the kids in the classroom, thinking about uh, the teachers that Chantel thought about, but in the case of Mary, the societal pressure would have been overwhelming, but Mary was blessed. Like Mary, Chantel's reputation was protected and their character caused them to be blessed. Born with a promise, called before birth. So there was a promise that Jesus would be born to a virgin and he would save, he would enter this world and be saved. That, um, and that promise was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Through the lives of Mary and Joseph, it was fulfilled. And Joseph was committed to doing what the law said. So let's go into the think it questions. Why is the opening of this account important? Well, it tells of the virgin birth. That's what we were just talking about. And, um, and he, Jesus, was the only person to be born without sin. Explore the character and respect Joseph had for his intended Mary. Clearly, he was committed to her, and he had a heart for her. He recognized, even before the, the angel had come and spoken to him, he recognized that it would not be good for him to disgrace her or for, he did not want her to be stoned. He had a heart, he had compassion for this person he had committed to. Examine, examine the historical implications of this account. Um, God planned this all out. <laughs> That's the one thing about God. Like he knows these, he, he puts these plans in place and Every intricate detail is worked out. That's how awesome God is. Um, even though he knew that this would not be easy for Joseph, that it would not necessarily be easy for Mary, he knew that she loved him. He knew the right person to go through. He selected her intentionally because he knew that she loved him and she was committed to him. Likewise, he knew that Joseph was law abiding and that he had a heart. And so although Joseph was likely hurt or even th potentially thinking about the shame, he still decided to do what he was told to do. He still decided to follow the law and to follow his heart. He had compassion on her. Um, and each of us, right, we're born with a promise. 
it's us, up to us to stay focused. So Joseph didn't allow himself to get distracted um, very long. Uh, once the angel came, God sent someone in the form of an angel. He sent an angel to let Joseph know that this was his plan. And if we relate it back to the story, um, Chantel had her mom to keep her focused, to remind her. And that's exactly what happened here. So see, it's easy for us to focus on the difficulties in life, but this week the challenge is to look on the brighter side of things. Examine whose voices influence your mood and choose to give positive advice to someone else. Change happens when we are intentional about the things we focus on. I encourage you to focus your attention on the Lord. Do you recognize um, the Lord's word as the absolute truth, as um, the powerful? Do you recognize that's what we're supposed to do, recognize that God's word is true and we can lean and we can count on him. That's right. That's what faith is. So I encourage you today. We all should be encouraged, right, to trust God despite our circumstances. Trust what his word says about our situations. Focus. Mary rejoiced. Yes. Mary rejoiced, she was able to, and Joseph obeyed. It didn't say he rejoiced, but he did what was right in the sight of God. That's what we have to do. Be still and let God work. That's right. We were all born with a promise. And I'm so thankful that God chose us. I'm so thankful that God chose you. He chose you to know about his word, to know about the birth of Christ, to know about salvation. And you were born with a promise on your head to be saved. So I pray that you spend time in this word. Yes, go back and look at this story of the birth of Christ and think about how the promises that God made come through, <laughs> come to us through Christ, affect you and your family, and the fact that I was born into a family that believed, I think, is just awesome for me, and it's awesome for you that we're here right now with that promise. So we thank God for this time with you. We thank God that he, have, he has protected us during this time in our lives and allowed us to be here, and we pray that you will just stay safe, keep your social distance, mind your parents, Stay your, keep your head like focused on the things that are, are for you, what God has for you. And look, um, get your head down into this word too. It will never fail you. God will never fail us. So we just thank you. We bless you. We bless God for what he has done for us. And we pray that you have a great week. <laughs>